Hello, my name is Indusfa. I'm one of the uh, final years. I'm studying at University of Birmingham and we have... So yeah, we've got Abu Bakr here. So I'm a fourth year medical student currently at Aston Medical School. Okay, so we're making this video because a lot of people have been asking uh, about the differences between Birmingham and Aston in terms of the core, the curriculum. Um, we're taking a little bit more of an Islamic perspective because we're both Muslims and I think it will be very useful for those who are Muslims applying for both Aston and UAB. Um, but if you're non-Muslim watching, you can also find a value between the differences that we have in the curriculums as well. So we'll start with the sort of the first sort of big question I think is what is the curriculum like uh, in Aston? Yeah absolutely so I'd break it down and say that it's it probably will maybe what people expect so it's a five-year course the first two years are essentially pre-clinical and the next three are clinical I would say there is you could say it is a bit of an integrated course as well so there are there are some clinical aspects in the first two years too so for example in year one you do get a bit of primary care exposure so towards the start of the year you get one week in the GP and towards the end of the year you get a second week as well um you do get one or two days of uh, dissection as well at Leicester University so you'll be taken out sort of on a coach on one of the days towards the start of the year and then you do some work on dissection and then towards the end of the year as well you get a day there too um I would also say that in second year you also get two weeks at a GP um towards the start of the year i'm not too sure about towards the end because that's when so there was a lot more like covid involvement and stuff so okay. maybe a bit different but that was my experience uh yeah that's generally it so i was in the first two yeah pre-clinical main, mainly lectures and group work sessions and then next three hospital placements and some gp placements as okay. well can i just quickly ask with the anatomy dissection so you only have two dissection sessions throughout the whole year yeah so not very much at all Okay, and when but when you do have the dissection sessions, is it like a full on like you know nine to like six kind of like full on dissection of? Yeah, so it's it's a full day, but bear in mind that the there is a bit of time in traveling in the morning and traveling back okay. from Aston to Leicester. Okay. But generally, yeah, you do spend a full day there. And did you find the dissections to be useful, given there's only very few sessions you get? Yeah, so it's few, but I did find it was useful. I think just actually getting your hands on having a feel of some of the things that you just see in the books and stuff is it's a lot more different in the actual actually experiencing that hands-on but yeah definitely okay and in in relation to sort of the dissection do you get any prosection with it like or like or like do you have like a prosection lab in Aston somewhere that you can look at so when I was doing it not there there wasn't much pro section there was a little bit actually here and then some of the sessions so I, I believe we'll discuss a bit of anatomy later on and in one two of those sessions, there often were some sort of real life models or some very similar models to that. Okay. That there was a bit of pro section there, so that was discussed. And there was like an anatomy teacher at the front. Right. That's bit. fine. All right. And can you tell me a little bit about uh, you? So you mentioned about uh, fourth, fifth year. So you, what, what is the curriculum like there? How is it taught there? So in the clinical years. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So in years three, four, five, I would say they're quite similar. So in terms of about you know good 95 percent of the time you are essentially just on clinical placements you're either you're mainly in either in a hospital or in year three in particular you're, you're at a gp as well so it's broken up sort of into three terms in, in the in one of the three terms you'll be at a gp so you will be at a gp for about 12 weeks you that you are there for quite long so about three months and then in the other two terms that are a similar time length you'll be at two different hospitals and then during those times you are expected to cover sort of the uh more well-known specialty so there'll be a, a, uh, some time on cardiology some time on spiritual some time on renal okay. and, and is it structured teaching that you guys get so like is it like two weeks cardio two weeks renal, or is it sort of gen med gen surge you guys do it yourself yeah it's a lot more so sort of we do it ourselves so it's not that outlined and that, okay. that and it's more and then fourth year is it more structured Fourth year, I would say, yeah, fourth year, definitely more structured. So okay. in fourth year, instead of it being three different large blocks, it's six different uh, six week blocks and it is outlined a lot more. So the first block is on like, maybe on oncology, the next box on psychiatry and all the teaching and everything is just going to be on that specialty. However, okay. in year three, it's sort of at the start of the year, we were, we were just given basically a bunch of conditions about 300 okay. or so that just, and it was broken into each of the specialties and it was sort of just over your 
the 24 weeks on the hospital placement and also being GP to you are expected to cover that on your own okay. and then take your own initiative to go to those wards, go to those ward rounds. There is some teaching as well in year three. So that's generally how people did it. So when there was teaching around some of the GI topics and conditions, generally they'll spend that week focusing okay. on that. That's fine. That makes sense. So I'll go through what Birmingham is like. So Birmingham, um, so there are some similarities, but there are some differences. So firstly, we don't do dissections at all. If you want to do dissections in Birmingham, it's uh, it's actually um, you have to do an, an actual intercalation in it to do dissection. Right. So there is no dissection involved. So we don't get any exposure to that. But uh, first two years is very similar preclinical stuff. So we learn all the sort of preclinical knowledge um, is an integrated approach, just like you guys. We have lectures and then we have PBLs and SGT small group teachings uh, mm -hmm. to accommodate for the lectures. Um, the lectures, I would say, are very intense. I think there's like for us, like 96. Um, is it sort of similar? That's all 96, was it, for lectures? So for us, I, I wouldn't say it's as intense as yours. So I'd okay. say... But for no, so when you say nine six is that pretty much all filled with lectures and uh, yeah, well majority I'd say like it would be like three and then an hour break and then three and then an hour break and then like maybe another two kind of thing would that be that sort of intense or would it be less intense than that I would say less intense less intense okay. so you would get quite a few lectures from about maybe nine till about three four okay uh, but there would be maybe one two hour breaks in between as well oh, okay there'd be some the like one to two hours of lectures in the morning mm. then there'll be about two hour group work session and okay. then after maybe one two lectures as well okay fine um yeah okay that makes sense um so that does show there's a lot more intensity in ub and but one thing i want to make pe people clear is intensity doesn't make, mean that you're going to be a better med student or a better doctor etc um sometimes you just learn a lot of I would say not useful information um, that out there as well in Birmingham anyway. So it doesn't necessarily mean that they're being taught less and or etc. Because we're all taught to a certain standard, we have to be we have to know everything to a certain standard. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. I just chip in yeah. there. So yeah, exactly. There's always the GMC standards and everything that need to be met by all universities. And also, yeah, what well, I would say that was maybe a little worry of mine as well when I was going through it. I just thought that maybe some of the my UOB colleagues, because I do have a couple of friends there as well, mm. maybe are getting maybe a bit of a better teaching experience. But to be honest, I would say that when you, it is a bit more sort of independent in, in the way that with our group work sessions and things, they do require quite a lot of time, I'd say independently. So you are doing quite a lot of work on the side and independently going through and mm. you trying to understand the case and things that you're going to discuss in the next session. So I would say, yeah, I, I would sort of agree with you there that they might be broken up differently or some places may do more lectures, but overall, yeah, there's a yeah, good one. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think some people get worried about that. It's like, oh, just because there's more lectures necessarily means, oh, I'm going to get better teaching. That's not necessarily true. I've heard actually all good things about Aston in terms of teaching. The, 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 like a lot of people have given good feedback in terms of teaching. Um, we'll talk about teaching in a, in, a, in a different question, but uh, I'll just stick to the curriculum for now. Um, so yeah, that's the preclinical for so the two years. And then mm -hmm. three years we have preclinical. Similar to your third year, ours is broken up to general medicine, general surgery, but there is no GP placement in terms of a dedicated GP placement. We have GP placements, but this is broken up. So for example, for us, our GP placement uh, happens every Friday since first, uh, not every Friday, but every we have a once a day every two weeks uh, since first year. And it mm -hmm. continues the same thing in second year, same thing in third year, and even the same thing in fourth year. In fifth year is the only time we get a five week or five to six week pure GP block. So you have a much longer GP block than mm -hmm. we do. Um, so that's the first time. And just like you guys, fourth year is a lot more structured. Third year is less structured. Uh, I would feel like in third year, and you may correct me if I'm wrong, did you feel like you were fresher again, like, you know, learning new things and like preclinical and clinical, they didn't really seem the same did it feel like that for you when you transitioned or did you feel like the transition was easier for you guys because your curriculum preclinical was more clinical focused did you feel oh yeah I would say that the clinical focus definitely did help and especially um we had quite a lot of case and things in the group work sessions and so that I would say that actually did really help and you did often see sometimes what you would read about and discuss as a group you would see on placement too so I'd say yeah it was it actually was quite a nice new transition Okay, so I think this is something that's very different. In Birmingham, I felt the second to third year transition, I literally felt like a newbie. I felt like a, a fresh, fresher again in third year. Mm -hmm. And because it was 
the third year is like the least intense here for Birmingham. So if there's like first year is not as intense, second year is very intense, third year is not as intense, fourth year is very intense, so fifth year is sort of mediocre intense. Um, so it goes up and down sort of cycles. I think some people think of medicine as this upward trend. It just gets more and more difficult. That's mm -hmm. not entirely true. I think there is like ups and downs. And third year, because it wasn't as structured, we have a little bit more freedom, a bit more time to do other things. So it was quite nice. Um, but that that's very important for people to realize that um, we don't have that nice sort of transition that I guess you guys had because you had more clinical focus that we, we did have some clinical focus. But it felt mm. a lot more basic science-y, all of that like background knowledge, rather than how does that always apply to medicine. And it wasn't always clear to me um, anyways. Mm. Um, and now coming to final year, I think the, the one of the things I don't like about Birmingham, and again, you can see, tell me what it's like, and we're going to come to this now, is about mm. clinical um, skills that you get. So one of the issues I find in Birmingham is things like suturing, we're not taught until final year or uh, or arterial blood gases we're not taught until final year are you taught this uh, in like later on in years or are you taught these like earlier on in years so i think it's suturing uh i'm not too too sure actually there are there were definitely one or two sessions that you could sign up for and do in the earlier years i do recall um i'm not sure if we're given a specific dedicated sort of session so perhaps that's yeah. coming in fifth year okay so you haven't around. been you're not signed off for suturing it like you're not having it's to not sign up okay no, so no. i think it's similar to us where in fifth year you do it which i think is a, a con for both of us because i think we have surgical placements in mm -hmm. third and fourth year where actually it would be good to get that suturing experience and we have a lot more exposure whereas when you come to fifth year you find like yes you have the opportunity to suture but it's not as prominent as like third year when you're actually stuck in you're already gloved up you might as well try to learn how to suture or have the basics start to build up but we're not given that basic so i think from the surgical side of field uh i feel like that should that would have been very useful and i think yes if you're in surge soft if you have a specialist interest you can do it but I think mm. otherwise you 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 know you don't get that sort of thing yeah i definitely agree i'd say especially yeah, as you were saying with the surgeries because oftentimes when you are there in a surgery the most you can really do is perhaps like hold back something or yeah. just have like the baby suction but i'd say yeah if you had that skill of suturing perhaps you could have there as well and just yeah. get that practice in how diverse is um aston um like a lot of people say it's like desi central etc is this sort of okay. true or is this sort of a fake narrative that people have I would say it is quite diverse. I would say it's actually, it's not too, too far from the truth, but I would say it's very diverse. So um, there are, there's probably that's about 15, 20% perhaps white British, I would say about half or so, maybe 40% or so, sort of maybe British Pakistani, British Indian, that kind of thing. Uh, but there are quite a lot of internationals as well. So in each year, there's about 100 students that are from sort of the UK and 20 that are international. So you do get people from all over the place. You got maybe got one or two people from America, some people from Dubai, some people from uh, just a couple uh, different okay. places. So there are definitely it is very diverse. I would say, yeah. Okay. There are. So I think. E oh, 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 sorry. Now okay. go ahead. So yeah, I think UB is slightly different. I think I was surprised as it is diverse, but is not as diverse as I might have expected. But I think that's mm -hmm. uh, given with UB being a much older university, etc. But it's, it, I would say, but I think it, it's fairly diverse, I think, but there, uh, uh, but definitely less, I think 30% probably from like BAME population, 30 to 40%, I would say is from BAME population. Mm -hmm. I think the other sort of 40% would be probably like a white population, a yeah. white Caucasian, or at least mixed. So a lot of the BAMEs would have, um, would be mixed, but with white and something, um, mm -hmm. I found anyway. Um, and then the like the last 10% would be internationals. Um, but internationals in Birmingham are fairly well off as well. So that's something I, I don't know if the same as Aston, like yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, international yeah. are well off. Um, it's nothing bad about that. It's just that that's you have to be well off to be able to afford the U UK system. It's, it is very expensive. Um, mm -hmm. I don't think it's they I this is one issue is if you are from like a poorer background, etc., you don't have the opportunities from abroad to come to the UK as much. Um, even with scholarships, it, it is quite difficult. Um, but yeah, so that's, yeah, that's quite good to know about how diverse it is. Mm -hmm. So we talked a little bit about anatomy, but let's focus now about anatomy. So what exactly is anatomy like? So you mentioned a little bit about the uh, dissections and things, but how exactly is it taught throughout the first yeah. two years? Mm -hmm. So it's mainly taught in the first year, particularly in the second term. So you get a couple of the basics about just 
some of the fundamentals of the body structure and everything in the very first term, but then specifically anatomy in itself, breaking down like the upper limb, lower limb, pelvis, all of those you know ways that it's often grouped is, is particularly in the second term over about so a 10 12 week block it's known as the musculoskeletal block and in the way that that's done is so every week there'll be one sort of day dedicated to it uh, there'll be lectures beforehand and some lectures after and in in between there'll be like a two-hour group work session and in that session that's usually broken up into four periods of 30 minutes and in each of these four periods there's usually like a worksheet that you sort of go through in the, the, the group so one or two of them will be on essentially like labeling different diagrams and making sure you have an understanding of all the different nooks and crannies of the different bones and muscles of that group of uh, you have that structure that you're dealing with that week and then the other one or two documents that you sort of go through one will be on certain clinical cases so seeing how that actually applies in the real world and what are some common conditions and disorders that often occur in those and you'll discuss those and then the last a session is usually a bit more of a perhaps a bit of a teaching maybe go over some imaging that's to do with that section of the body and um yeah and there's models that are often passed around that you discuss and you point at and you label as you're doing these uh there's usually a ctf as well in the group sessions so they're always there to aid and guide and help you if you're stuck on a question or anything um so yeah and i would say that in terms of the way that the lectures in second year, did you do neuroanatomy more or in second year yeah did you do more neuroanatomy there was more neuroanatomy in second year okay. yeah okay so yeah i think ours are both similar um so this anatomy right. structure is the same so second semester that's exactly the same thing we had we had a M, we call it mjm um but i do prefer the way you guys have structured it we have two lectures before then a small group teaching and two lectures after sort of dedicated towards anatomy um i think because we the because we have four different modules that we take um I think they the way they, they sometimes spread out the anatomy lectures all over the place rather than this sort of structured approach that you guys take where like maybe that one sort of day you have those two lectures, a small group teaching another two lectures. Um, mm -hmm. We do have lectures, but sometimes I felt like the lectures weren't always related to the worksheet. So it didn't feel like it was linear. Um, right. It felt like it was very different. So sometimes we'd, the, the general topic would be like muscles and we'd for so many times we would learn about the motor neuron, the fascia, keep going up, but we didn't, you know, even the simple basics of like the muscles, okay, this is the break, uh, base, uh, uh, brachial, uh, bicep brachialis, this is where it is, this is where it joins into. The basics, we weren't really taught that as a lecture and I would have preferred that. Um, again, I don't know if that's changed in the first year or that feedback has been gone down, but even our anatomy sheets, these are 20 years old, they haven't really changed our anatomy sheets that much. Right. And they some of the structures like they're not like easy to spot they're not like what exactly is that they're like they're like drawn by someone and so it's not very clear is that is that the tricep is that the aponeurosis is, what is it like it's not it wasn't very clear well from from the diagrams we did so what we had to do is uh, we sometimes we weren't even given answers afterwards so mm -hmm. if you knew it you knew it if you didn't like you were screwed like you were supposed to have gone through the answers with your small group teaching and if you yeah. didn't, you have to like flick through like a small Gray's Anatomy and like try to learn it. And a lot of the times what we ended up doing is we ditched the sheets because that wasn't ended up being useful and actually just use Teach Me Anatomy and then use that to sort of help with our revision. Um, I don't know if that sort of happened with you guys or actually did you find your worksheets to be a lot more useful. But in the in the same sense, we did have clinical reasoning and like anatomy. These were, they, that, that's exactly the same as you guys. But mm -hmm. I don't know how useful did you find your worksheets when it came to revision? Yeah, so I would say that the worksheets were a good foundation, definitely. And to be honest, even the clinical uh, scenarios as well, I'll actually agree with you with a lot of the, the the group work sessions and finding them as useful. I would say a lot of it perhaps depends on your group as well. Mm -hmm. And um, if people are dedicated and are willing to put in the work and things, then they can definitely be a lot more useful. But yeah, similarly to you, we don't really get answers at the end of it. If you get through quickly, you can often discuss it with the CTFs and generally they'll sort of tell you if you're on the right lines and yeah, you, you've kind of got the correct answer there, but you're not given like a formal answer sheet or anything like that yeah. to, that you have on hand. So it is a bit difficult in that sense. Um, I would say another thing that they do or what well, they sort of like to do here at Aston is that the group worksheet that you're working on, oftentimes, if I'm remembering correctly, usually the, the topic that is being discussed in the worksheet is that it is going to be discussed in the lectures in the following week. So oftentimes you do a lot of that learning on your own and then sort of the lectures are a bit more of a revision kind of thing. Uh, but generally I would say that the lectures are more to do with yeah, disorders and different conditions to do 
with that part of the body rather than going through the anatomy of it all in some sessions there were there was a bit of that but generally that's what I expected that you cover that and you've learned that when you did the group work and you've done that in your own independent time oh i see um, so there's a lot of independent similar to us like a lot of independent work and kind of thing yeah. okay um and physiology was that sort of same or was that more lecture based because i ours were more lecture based i felt and more like small group teachings is that similar yeah. to you? i would i would agree with that too yeah so a lot of it is more lecture based mm. uh th that's more I would say more in, in, in each of the systems is covered more in second year. So in the first block of second year, that's when you cover like uh, GI and a uh, reproductive system, reading yeah. system, all that stuff. And it's yeah done in a similar way. So there are lectures on it. And the first few are to do, yeah, with just the physiology, how everything works, different enzymes and all of that kind of thing. Yeah. And then after that, yeah, there's it's a okay. more physiology and the common conditions and things. Okay. And how do you find small group teachings or PBL? Do you find those useful or do you find they weren't that useful for you? Um, I would say it's it depends how useful your group is, to be honest. Okay. If people are willing to put in the work, then it can be really good. And you can have some good discussions and people often bring to like bits of information that they discovered okay. when they were doing their own work and things. Mm. Uh, the CTF service and all the people there helping from the medical staff themselves are, are genuinely really good and really nice as well. Yeah they're always happy to help but yeah i'd say you could just get a lot more from the session if people are willing mm. to put the work and yeah if you i think over it before yeah. then yeah mm. definitely that can help yeah i think that was very much similar for us as well like pbls the more people put in was very useful i think uh similar i think Birmingham. one thing i would say is physiology was taught fairly well i think i had a much stronger grasp of physiology mm -hmm. um but not much you know anatomy took a while for me I, it was sort of lagged i felt like i kept learning as i went on I didn't oh wait that was that that's there or i keep forgetting things but again um i think i didn't have that strong foundation in anatomy as much as maybe i could have but again mm -hmm. i guess maybe uh maybe the teaching style wasn't aligned to my teaching style. It could be that. So I wouldn't want to say, oh, anatomy is just horrible. But the thing is, I would I would say that, but then if you go to any sort of uh, doctors or anything, they go to UOB, they're like, oh, your anatomy is crap. It's fine, I'll teach yeah. you. So there, there's this stereotype. And unfortunately, I feel like it is there is some truth to it um, because of the way anatomy is taught. Now, what is clinical teaching like for you guys? So as in like in the clinical years? And yeah, in the like, clinical years, how is clinical teaching? So I would say, I think from perhaps what I've discussed with other UOB students, it's maybe pretty similar, but so while you're on placement, uh, you get quite a bit of teaching. So it varies from what block you're doing and everything, but I would say generally it's about sort of two to five times a week, you'll either get, whether it's bedside teaching or almost like lecture style teaching or in like a little classroom and just a small group being taught by like a CTF or an F1. Um, yeah, there is quite a bit of that. And, and is it structured? So, like, do you have like certain like a timetable or anything for your clinical teaching? So I'd say that depends on just the site that you're at. So some hospitals, oh, okay. there'll be a lot more. Just the, the admin team there will do that all for you and just yeah. get them over to you. Or sometimes at other session, uh, other sites, it's more like you'll probably put in a group, and oftentimes somebody will be selected as the leader, and they'll have to go out and email oh, them to register. Yeah. Time. Yes, okay, I'll. that's fine. That makes sense. I think that's very similar to us. Um, I just want to confirm with your placements uh, if they're the same. So, mm -hmm. um, we have, for example, Hereford, Worcester, uh, City Sandwell, uh, New Cross, QE, um, Russell Hall, and Warsaw as well. Uh, there is an Alexander, but I don't know how many people got Selig and Alexander, but those are the sort of placements that we get. Do you get the same or do you guys go with to Leicester for some reason? I'm not sure because you have the anatomy thing or do you have slightly different? No, no yeah. It, I think pretty much almost all the sites that you said, I would say we we also have. I think there's maybe one or two places in uh, Gloucester and Dudley as well, but I think that's more in the later years. Okay. And um, the, we also have a uh, placement at Royal Orthopaedic Hospital as well. Yeah, we have that as well in fourth year for us or for our yeah, RH. Third year for us, yeah. Well, yes. Okay, fine. So we have orthopedics in fourth year. You guys are in third year. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Um. Now, one thing I want to say with placement. So I, I as I, you, you brought up, and, and I think it's very much the same as us. Um. Yeah, so certain places like City Sandwell, Hereford, Walsall, they had a lot more structured teaching for us. I don't know much Russell Hall, apparently they do as well. Mm -hmm. um, one thing uh, did you found, find with placement that was they, were they more strict with you guys? Like that you had to come in at a certain time and leave at a certain time or they're quite flexible um, with you guys with like, okay, you can come in this time but you just leave later, et cetera. Um, were they a bit more flexible about those things? 
Yeah, I'd say it's always difficult to group them all together and say they're all strict or all not strict. Okay. Honestly, I'd say it just depends on the side that you're at. Okay. For them, they'll just uh, there's often like an app or something you have to sign in on. You have to clock yeah. in, you have to clock out. Some of yeah. them there's a sign-in sheet. Yeah. Uh, generally, it's you. You should be attending, of course. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. Times and everything, nine to five. I would say some places you can kind of get away with it. Yeah. Um, I'm not encouraging or endorsing. No, anything. no, no, no. But it's not about yeah. encouraging that. For example, sometimes, for example, let's say you had an appointment in the morning and you come in at twelve o'clock instead. Would that like cause an issue with the attendance? So some people have issues in the morning, or for example, some people are you know they've got other commitments in the mornings and can they work it around with placements and things um is, is that a possibility with you guys or are they very strict on like you have to do this or you can't like you know or we don't clock you in um or they're like yeah we're understanding we can we can accommodate for these sort of things i think generally they're, they are i'd say if there's some sort of forewarning or anything yeah. like that genuine like you've got an appointment or anything like that generally yeah. i think you send an email ahead of time that's usually yeah. not a problem I would say, of course, you know, if you got some like timetabled or you went out of your way to book some sort of teaching session with mm. a consultant, maybe just yeah. be a bit careful when you, that's happening. But yeah. yeah, yeah, as long as it's a bit of a forewarning, anything like that, it's usually not an issue. Yeah. So I think ours is fairly similar, but it depends on the placement. So we have a 2.30 clock in. So, for example, we for us, it's as long as you clock in before 2.30, it's OK. Um, there's no sort of like, um, oh, you have to be in from nine or like anything like that. This depends on the placement again. So some are a bit more strict that they expect you at nine, but some day, as long as you before 2.30, because some people, they stay up until six, seven, they're absolutely okay. Then you can stay up to 10 o'clock and that's fine. So it, it depends on each individual. Some people, so for example, I personally prefer to come a bit later and leave later. So mm -hmm. I usually come around 10, 11 and leave like six, seven. I just prefer that because I get a bit of sleep later a bit, uh, and it's fine and there's never been an issue. Unless, mm -hmm. for example, I have to be there early in the morning at eight o'clock. Uh, for mm -hmm. like surgical etc but if i'm not necessarily needed there and it's just for me for example if i just sign in for like sign offs or i'm just learning on the wards then i might just go in a bit later um mm -hmm. so there, there are a bit more flexible uh i think in, in that sort of sense uh, at ub um, but again it depends on the placement and where you are um, but they're not sort of you have to be at there at this specific time they're not like that mm -hmm. um all right the next question i have is um what are the societies like do you feel like you have to sort of drink and stuff i think a lot of people are worried about drinking uh, while coming to university or clubbing and i know we're both muslim but uh, how, how easy is it to sort of become awashed into that like it's a very big thing in aston well i would say to be honest with you i'm not i'm not too too involved in societies myself okay i would say um yeah, I guess it just depends on the societies that you join. How, how is that at UOB? Perhaps if you give your view, then that'll... Yeah, so at UOB, it, it's very big. So clubbing and socialising is such a big, big thing. So like freshers, I remember from myself, when we got our freshers thing, like I just thought with freshers, you would have like some non-alcoholic events where you just, you know, you're just there to meet people from de various different backgrounds, etc. Just, you know, uh, seeing what other people are like there. Um, just to get to know your peers, right? So I thought that that's the sort of vibe. There will be some sort of like fresher event in that sense. But it didn't feel like that. I felt like every single fresher event had some sort of drinking, some sort of clubbing involved. And like, if you didn't do that, you didn't fully like get to know anyone. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I think we had an Islamic medical society, but it was, um, but the, the, the events were much later. Like it was like, for example, the second week of fresher. So um, the first week of fresher, I was just there like, I can't really do anything. I'm not. Yeah. Like, I, I was I was really bored at the time, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know if you had a similar experience or um, you had a very different experience for your freshers. Yeah, no, I would I would I would agree with that. Yeah, I would say in the first week, to be honest with you, yeah, you're sort of going from stalls to the stall. There's not much you can really get from it. Uh, but then yeah, and then the people that you meet and things, oftentimes they'll, if they are like non-Muslim and things, they'll be like plan to go out somewhere in the evening and then go drinking and stuff after. So I'd say yeah, I'd say it just. Uh, a lot of time depends on the people that you're with. So if you're with Muslims, I think then generally that's not going to be an issue. And yeah. uh, you just go for like a meal and that'll be the end of it. Or do like some event or have yeah. something like that. And uh, I would say yeah, similarly with you, the ISAC that we had, there was like a welcome to Islam week. But I think that was a good so two, three weeks in. That did happen after Freshers Week as well. So yeah, I would say there's, you don't engage perhaps as much as maybe some non-Muslims would during that week. Uh, just for similar reasons as well. But I'd say, yeah, yeah, there's that is generally what a lot of people do get up to. And so that okay. kind of 
a bit of a limitation of how well you get to know people. Okay. And how is he? Um, do you feel like it is to be a Muslim at Aston? Um, do you feel it's easy or do you feel like it, it, it's very, it's something that you you have to you have to go above and beyond because it's so difficult because maybe fitna there or it feels like um like every opportunity there is like someone trying to get you to drink something or something like did it feel like that at all at Aston or did you feel like actually you were very comfortable being Muslim and never felt difficult even at placement I think mm. I would say personally I, f- I felt like it was okay I felt like it's not really too difficult to do I'd say to be honest with you I made sure that I kind of set myself up quite well so I wasn't I didn't find it difficult, so I made sure I made some good, you know, Muslim friends and everybody. Tried to get to know as many Muslims as I could, and then that way there'd always be someone that reminds, okay, guys, come on, let's go pray Zohar or let's go pray Asr, mm. and then we'll all head over to like, the student union and pray there. Um, so the you know, there's facilities on campus and everything, and that's usually not a problem. So do you have um, how many prayer rooms? Do you, do you have like your own prayer room in med school, or so there's not one in the med school itself, but. Uh, there's there's mainly just one in the student union that you have you sort of have to walk. Is it to. big enough for everyone to use, kind of thing? Or yeah, I would say maybe at Juma it can get quite full, but I think that's more just because there's normally two times and a lot more people just come to the first okay. time. So we are trying to get people to sort of divide up between okay. the two. Um, but I would say if you don't have that community with you, it can be quite difficult. There is naturally in today's world as well. There's going to be a lot of fitna on campus, and mm. it's easy to get drawn away and distracted by certain things. But so as long as you set yourself up with a lot of Muslim brothers and get into like, the group chats and just get to know yeah. the ISAC and everything, then generally I think you'll be okay. Okay, so I think in Birmingham, it's uh, I would say it's slightly different um, in terms of like uh, the, I think it's changed now. I think it's become better now. I think mm-hmm. early years, I think uh, the IMED, for example, wasn't fully established, etc. But there was, um, you know, a push to like get more integration into sort of the community and try to encourage the brothers to join. Um, but I think there was a, a lot of um, a lot more difficult because I think a lot of the people I knew and like the, your classmates and stuff, you'd feel isolated because you're like, oh well, they're going to go and drink, so I can't go with them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I even like if I was to join other societies, so for example, like I went and joined Jordan Society, I, I did a bit of that, I did cadets for a bit. Again, right. a lot of it was like very much heavily based on drinking, and that was quite sad because it was like you don't everything you do is like drinking, drinking, drinking. Just as soon as it's not a Muslim based event, it's drinking, drinking, drinking which I didn't really like, um, but there are great, like, you know, things out there to explore, like, uh, uh, and I sort of got involved in, um, but I think it, it is a big part, even things like I did Muay Thai, and I thought these guys were supposed to be healthy, even then, like, you know, they have, like, a meal out, they'd be, oh, we're going to go for the pub to put a meal out, right? like, yeah, I just didn't the next step. yeah, exactly, <laughs> Um, so I just find that was something like, quite difficult for me, especially when I wanted to go and join like these other sort of cool societies that existed, um, yeah. how difficult it was. Um, so I found it quite challenging. Um, one of the things I didn't find super challenging was actually, well, actually initially did find it challenging and then it became easier, was praying on time. So a lot of the times the lectures uh, would be on like Zohar time or Asa time mm-hmm. and then having to tell, so Initially, I think I was scared to like tell the lecturer, oh, like how do how do I tell the lecturer like I'm gonna go? Because it feels awkward. Because imagine you're in a room full of people, and then you're just one like just leaving. Um, it feels a bit awkward. But then when we understood, like we just tell them a, a bit earlier on, we're gonna leave. And I think as you get older, you realize like they don't really care. Like if you're gonna leave, you leave. There's only one or two lecturers that are a bit funny about it. Not because they're Muslim. It's just they're funny about people just leaving lectures. Um, mm-hmm. they will like literally call you out and they're like well, why are you leaving my lecture and oh, you're like, I'm, going to pray. I'm going to go pray and then they're like okay fine and then like yeah. they're okay with it they don't they don't hate you on it for it they just I think some people leave the lecture for like no reason I yeah. think they don't like the rudeness of aspect I don't know if you guys had the sort of same issue and trying to get <laughs> prayer yeah I mean of course naturally some of the lectures are going to fall during the prayer times and things and so I said generally what most of us did was we just sort of positioned ourselves near the door so it wasn't as like interruptive or anything like that I'd say yeah I perhaps when you're in the room because as as far as I know you have about 350 yeah 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 yeah. it can get quite big and so it's a bit more noticeable when somebody gets up and walks past and tries to get out but we just sort of position ourselves a bit more strategically and just slip out the back door or something like that Mm. but yeah generally nobody really has an issue with it if it's if it's ever sort of questioned then it's usually yeah i'm just going to pray i'll just be a couple of minutes and it's like oh okay yeah sure go ahead and uh yeah similarly during group work sessions or anything like that people just make sure they're in like the right position and it's not as 
you know, there's try to cause no disruption with it. And yeah, generally it's okay. And uh, just wrapping up, uh, my final few questions are more Islamic related. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, one question is not Islam related. So how do you feel about Birmingham as a city as a general? Are you from Birmingham yourself or? Yeah, I, I am essentially. So to me, okay. it's it's like home. So I've always sort of grown up here. Um, I'd say maybe it would be interesting to get some of the internationals' perspectives on it, if it is what they've sort of, uh, what they thought it was going to be like and everything. But I mean, yeah, for people that aren't really from here, I mean, there's, you know, plenty of food places. You've got like the Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery, Botanical Gardens, Cadbury World, all of that kind of thing. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've, you know, I, I love Birmingham. I've always been here. Okay. So for me, I've, yeah, it's, it's not too much of a problem. I can get around. Okay. Yeah. Right. How so I'm I'm not from Birmingham, so I'm from London. So right. obviously, uh, I'm from the better city. I was joking. <laughs> um, uh, but okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> check it, check it. Um, but no, I think that one of the things is, um, I think when you come from a bigger city, I think going to a smaller city, I think you you have to meet your you have to manage expectations of like mm -hmm. obviously, um, there are still food places. There are still great things to happen. Um, but one thing is in London is you always have something new going on. So there's like always a new shop going on or a new like trend or news, like something cool or mm -hmm. weird going on. Whereas in Birmingham, I think it's always the three roads. I know like Ladyful Road, Cobble Road, and Shopper Road. Like I just, yeah. I just know this, but you get some rocky, you go a bit further. But like, those are like the main spots for like the, the Manda meeting and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Like those are the three <laughs> spots and those are the places we hang out. Um, But I just, but one thing is, it's just, um. I think I liked about Birmingham that London doesn't have is a community. So the very, but Birmingham has a much better community atmosphere. And I never felt out of place in terms of like in the Muslim community or whatever. I never felt like they're always in terms of the Muslim community here. They mm -hmm. always want to bring people in. They want to bring a part of the community. Whereas in London, it's a lot more individualistic. So it's like, oh, it's right. me. You're like, who are you? Are you who, why are you saying salam to me? Like, who, I don't know you. Like that oh, kind of okay. So it can be sometimes, it can be like that in certain parts because mm -hmm. of the culture. They're like, oh, London is very independent. Like, if I don't know you, why am I saying salam to you? Like, literally, right. sometimes you'd go to, like, here in Birmingham, you say salam to Islam. There's no, like, yeah. I, I don't question you. We don't question who you are. We're brothers. That's yeah. it. But in London, sometimes you go to say salam. They're like, I say salam alaikum. They ask, well, who is you? Who are you? And then no. they put up the walaikum salam. Oh, so, God. Know, the walaikum salam? And then, <laughs> sure. then, but they go, and then we get into the you? And then they were Islam. So, which is, which I don't think is the right thing to do anyway. But mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, it's something that I think is a problem in London. But, I think one I do miss London in terms of a lot of the 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 nuances. Um, Manchester, I think, is very similar to Birmingham. I think people are coming down from Birmingham because I've been to Manchester as well. I think mm. um, you know the food places are very similar. Um, but personally, for food, um, I'll have to say like Birmingham doesn't win. They, are, I think, it comes a bit lower down. <laughs> I think Manchester and London just do food better than uh, Birmingham yeah. at the moment. Um, mm. So that's just my personal opinion, but obviously people who are in, in Boeing may say otherwise. Um, but basically, yeah, they've would, been, yeah. You know, if I just comment on that, so the community aspect, I'll definitely agree there. Yeah, so it's like, there's always like a mosque around the corner as well. So that's always quite nice. It's not really mm. an issue, just trying to find so much prayer or anything like yeah. that. And yeah, definitely when, it's always a nice thing when you, you, you're you a bit unsure if somebody's like Muslim or not, you just give them salam and they reply yeah. back. It's like Immediately it's like, okay, you can breathe now, you can just yeah. interact. It's quite a nice thing. It's like once you sort of recognize, and there's always Muslims around in Birmingham. It's quite yeah, a yeah. densely Muslim populated area. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I'd say definitely I'd agree with you in terms of the community aspect and everything. Yeah, I think one of the things I'd say about the mosque is like, for example, any placement I go to, I, I need to pray and I'm just like, I can't play in that place. It's like, mm. uh, where, where, I just put nearest mosque. And like, for example, the thing with Birmingham is because of all the motorways are nearby. So yeah. for example, even if you're slightly further away, if you get into the motorway, you get quickly towards a nearby mosque or like, for example, mm -hmm. in Wolverhampton, whatever, I was up north for some reason. And then mm -hmm. I had to go to a mosque and then, then I was managed to pray. So I never had an issue to find a prayer area. Whereas I think if you are in like, I don't know, York or like Bristol, whatever, you might find it a bit more difficult to find like a prayer space, etc. Mm -hmm. I was in Hereford. There is literally no mosques in there. The only mosque or the mm -hmm. only Friday Jum'ah I think takes place I don't know. I'm not. I, I tried to find another mosque. I couldn't find it. Yeah. it. Was probably within the hospital. Like that's where I saw most of the brown people anyway. So like right, within yeah. the hospital itself. And that was I it. To keep that in mind because I do have Hereford in a couple of weeks. So oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you, the only place is within the actual thing. 
Mm -hmm. So my final few question is, how easy is it to practice Islam while being at Aston? Do you feel it's a challenge? How has it been your journey from four years? Do you feel like your relation to Allah has become stronger while at university? Or do you feel it's weakened or hindered while at university? And if you could share some of those experiences. Yeah, sure. I would say over the four years, mine has increased personally. Um, it is a personal journey, of course. So it's, I'm sure it'll be a bit different for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and I'd say a lot of it, you do need to be a bit proactive about. So you do have to keep in mind that I would say naturally by default, kind of expect that it might weaken just because of the environment that you're within. People are drinking, people are partying. It's quite easy to naturally fall into that. So mm -hmm. you need to take that proactive role of trying to uh, put things in place to make that easy for yourself. So yeah, I, I always make sure that I'm meeting up regularly with a group of brothers and things every week. Mm. And, um, you know, it, it might not even, the intention might not be just to discuss Islam or certain topics or anything. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of brothers that I meet up with every now and then and we go over some medical things. But because we're all Muslims, so we all re remind each other to just, we'll, we'll all pray together or, mm. you know, even while discussing certain conditions and things, oftentimes like an Islamic question will come up and then that leads to a nice Islamic discussion. Yeah. But I'd say, yeah, a lot of it is to do with just the community that you have around you. So I would say, yeah. if you keep that in mind, you try to make sure you have a good group of brothers or if you're a sister, a good, good group of sisters around you, and that can definitely make it a lot easier. Mm. Um, yeah, I think my experience has been in Birmingham has been sort of up and down, um, but generally on the upward trend. Um, I think like there have been times where like it's not due to the community or anything or uh, fitness, it's just sometimes um, I felt like um, you have to remind yourself of Allah if you don't you it's easily to slip because of medicine itself mm. I felt like it, sometimes it was so intense that you're like oh I need to do this and I need to do this and then like oh so a lot of times like in five oh my god I have five minutes left like, yeah. you have to sort of rush and then those sort of things start to crop up if you mm. don't like have in your head oh I need to like if you don't have a lot as your priority mm -hmm. it, it quickly becomes like the, like the lowest thing if you don't prioritize it so like for example um, you know, you might be, uh, let's say you're studying, right? It's Maghrib time. If you're studying, mm. studying, studying, and you're like, you didn't put an alarm on, you forgot to put an alarm on that it's Maghrib time. What happens? Mm. You keep studying, 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 and then it's like uh, half an hour left, and you're like, oh my God, now I have to pray Maghrib, I need to quickly rush and then go do. When that mm. shouldn't be the case, you should have had an alarm on. But I think these are things, obviously, you progress, but I think medicine can actually, if you don't stay on top of it, can easily detract you. I just think anything in the world, in the worldly life, can detract yeah. you. And I think, we have to be careful like, again and, and i think that's something i think i wish i knew when i was 18 going in mm -hmm. is like realizing it can be intense but no if i got allah because w he will provide ease when things are difficult you like even if you feel like oh i'm gonna spend ten sometimes and you know when i was this is probably when i was a bit younger i was like mm -hmm. oh i'm gonna spend 10 minutes there but i'm gonna lose 10 minutes of studying but you realize now gra grand scheme of things that 10 minutes means nothing like you mm -hmm. sometimes waste your time on other things like that 10 minutes would probably way more beneficial to you way more beneficial in this life and the next life so you get a lot more out of it so i think that's something i reflected on anyway uh through my journey and um, so it has wavered so i would I, would, I wouldn't say to anyone it won't waver i would say it can waver um but it can get stronger if you do the right things and i don't know about asking yourself but in birmingham for example on the uh, imed chat there's like links that they give for like learning about more about islam or like these courses and Thing. I don't know, do they do something similar in Aston? Do they advocate those sort of things or do they have their own sort of things in Aston? So in terms of from the medical perspective, that we don't have quite have like an eye med chat that I believe you yeah. guys have to sort of like a Muslim okay. community within the medical yeah. sort of thing. But perhaps that will develop in the next few years as the community yeah. gets a bit bigger. But there is, of course, a, there's, a, there's an Aston ISOC chat in which there's regular mm -hmm. events and uh, talkers coming in. And so that is something that you can engage in. I would agree with you in terms of um yeah when you when you were saying so sort of, you know of course it's not like a stable uh, rise in terms of like your iman or anything but mm -hmm. yeah of course you're gonna have ups and downs that's gonna be expected that's just natural um I would also say that yeah definitely when you shift your perspective from putting like Allah first and making sure that you begin your day with uh getting make sure that you've sort of timetabled in when you're gonna perform your salah and everything and then go into how you're gonna break up maybe perhaps your revision or anything else that can make it a lot easier rather than mm. think about you the work you gotta get through and then squeezing in like mm. the whole time the time and all of that. Um but yeah no definitely I would agree with you there yeah okay and finally to end off um if you were to give anyone sort of tips for like uh what in terms of surviving Aston or anything that uh, as a Muslim, is there anything that you'd give specifically 
um, that you know for the future sort of generation that you can uh, that hopefully this video will show, show to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say just the number one tip is definitely just your. I've mentioned it a couple of times about your community. So I'd say naturally you're gonna make friends with people, right? So whether it's just the group that you're assigned to, or uh just any sort of yeah just people that are around you people that you find funny and things you're naturally going to gravitate towards certain people so unless you proactively go out there and try to make sure that you've made friends and you've gotten to know a lot of the people or you've gotten to know the the brothers or the sisters running isoc then it can you can quite easily fall into the wrong crowd and end up just going off with the wrong people and then as a result of that you might not even intend to initially you know fall into any sort of sin or, or go drink or anything but naturally if you're hanging out with the wrong people and they go off to do it you're going to feel pressure to go do that. Mm. So I would say, yeah, make sure you get a good group of people around you. Mm. Um, a second thing I would say is just try to make sure that you, yeah, prioritize Allah first. So mm. you are just, just, I'm sure, you know, everyone nowadays is a bit more aware that, yeah, just university time is a time of fifth night. It is difficult. You know, it's not easy unless you take some steps. So I'd say the way that we were talking about just scheduling your day, make sure you've got, you've planned out like when you're going to perform your salah and everything that sort of sorts out that aspect of it and you're not having to overthink that when the time comes mm -hmm. i would say just try to bring in some natural practices that we know can increase your iman so reading some quran in the morning mm -hmm. um doing some dhikr throughout the day uh but yeah how how about yourself any actually also so i would say just you just try to make sure you're involved at the isoc events and things mm -hmm. because you'll naturally uh increase your mind when you just once you know the brothers there when they start encouraging you to come to some of the events you'll get involved in the talks, you'll listen to that, and then you'll increase yourself in knowledge. And then naturally that will help you as well. Mm, so I, I agree with everything you've said. So I would just echo that same sort of thing for sort of people coming in. Um, but for people coming into Birmingham, I think there are other things I would really encourage. Um, I'm not sure if Aston does something similar, but very much get involved in a lot of societies the way you can, because I think there's a lot of cool things that can happen at university mm -hmm. that you'll get experiences in that you won't get an experience in. You will be later on, but actually you realize as you get older, you get less and less time to do things. People think, oh, when I'm F1, I can do this. I'm going to have more time. When I'm this, and that. this is such a bad logic. If you mm -hmm. want to do something from first year, you want to improve, for example, your uh, maybe robotics or drones or, um, you know, if you like horse riding, whatever it might be, do it during the first you know couple of years, because these are the years that you're, um, you know, while you're doing medicine, try and do these other activities and hobbies. Um, for example, I was very fortunate enough, especially from working class background, look for bursaries out there for traveling. So yeah. Alhamdulillah, I was able to go to China. And, you know, when I went to China, um, you know, you'd be surprised. I actually strengthened my relation with Islam because I saw the Uyghur Muslims and how nice they were. You know, I didn't know, but we we had a hidden communication through Islam in itself, like with mm -hmm. Islam and there was a common sort of etiquette and even in itself. And I thought there was something beautiful in that. And that even when you go there, you're in a different country, but the prayer is still the same. Mm -hmm. like, even though everywhere else, like no one's Muslim. It, and there was something so beautiful about it. So I think go out there there's so much opportunities at university that are halal opportunities that will mm -hmm. give you money to travel to do this and do that and um, use it don't think of university as i'm going to just study 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 and that's it no no, no girls no nothing like that just 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 this 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 this, this. and i think mm -hmm. that is a very bad aspect there are a lot you know make sure you spend time as you said with the community with your brothers make time to like see look for what extracurricular activities because the thing is actually it's easier I would say to become distracted if you're bored then if you spend your time doing something um good or something that yeah. will improve your skills so things like some people enjoy coding some people enjoy archery whatever it might be i think try to get engaged in something so with those times where you feel like oh i've got a lot of free time i'm not doing much here mm -hmm. use that time to just do something else so your your mind or your body is physically active or even go to the gym. One thing I think people are told is as you get older, you're going to go fat. Like if you don't like check yourself, you don't go to the gym. Honestly, you you lose, like I gained a bit of weight and I'm just like, wow, I don't know where this weight come on. It's just because a lot of the time is I'm very sedentary or, or like one of the things with being medics is very sedentary life. Yeah. We don't do as much exercise as we can do because of how intense our course is. And we don't mm -hmm. sometimes have the time to allocate to just exercising but we need to find time to do this and that's something very very important so islamically i think what you said is absolutely true i think from a, from my perspective is just getting involved in these societies is, is as important as well yeah you yeah, know i definitely agree with you there especially because if you proactively go out and try to get involved in these societies as you naturally fill up that time 
as you were saying, when you don't have these spare times where you're not sure what to do and then you fall into something else that you didn't initially want to do. Mm-hmm. And I think also, if you think back on like times in the past, I don't know if it's the same for you, but for me, when you are, when you sort of compare, like when you're doing your GCSEs versus doing your A-levels or your A-levels versus doing medicine, it feels like as time goes on and you get into the next stage and the next stage, that those things and they feel like they take longer or they're much harder than the previous ages and so just as you were saying if you're if you think that you know once you've finally gone into medicine then just purely focus on medicine and you know you can't do anything else I think and that you plan to do whatever you want to do after medicine just remember that just as before progressing from that previous stage to the next stage the next stage at least for me always feels a bit harder and so keep that in mind when you're if you want to do something at a late stage just know that it might be quite similar then where that might be taking a lot more of your time. You need to be spending a lot more time then. So if you do have any time now, yeah, get those things in definitely. Um, one quick question: Did you do you guys get bursaries and things for like working class uh, people from like a low income background? Do they get bursaries at Aston, or is that not a thing? So uh, it is. I I believe you can do. Um, it's not very. I, I'm not too too sure actually. But I, I just don't think it's very consistent. But is there not, is, there, is there anything that you get automatically or anything that? Or do you have to apply for a lot of those? The, the, there are some, some minimal ones that you can that you get automatically. So a lot of people get sort of like fifty pound ones here and there. So there's not too much there. But okay. if you do, usually if you just email like the scholarships at Aston, and you just mention it, just to if they can check if you're eligible for anything, usually okay. they'll get back to you. And a lot of people that I know of have done that and they found out that they were available for some of them, and that's often. Okay. Yeah, yeah so in Birmingham, a, I think we have we have an automatic one. So if you're from working class, we get so it used to be maximum two thousand. I think it decreased to a thousand. I'm not sure if it's gone back to two thousand, but it, it's around a thousand to two thousand pounds that we get extra. Um, yeah. And also we get um, you know how I talked about traveling. So we mm-hmm. sometimes get work experience bursaries, which is up to eight hundred pounds. And also if you're from a working class, if you want to do travel abroad and do sort of any projects or anything, they give you up to a thousand pounds. So there's a lot of like good like you know look at universities uh bursary schemes because there's a lot of ways to get some free money to just you know you need it like honestly one of the biggest thing i think is i didn't realize how much money you need at university um i would say if you can try to get a job as soon as you can because um or like some sort of tutoring job it, these are more flexible um because it's, yeah. it's honestly like you don't realize there is a lot of expenses that come being a student i think i didn't realize until i you know as an adult there's just so much like expenses that happen um but yeah and so i believe that they did introduce like another thing last year i'm not quite sure what the name of it was but yeah if you are if you if you're from like a lower income background or anything like that that you can apply for and i think they just let you know a certain amount that you're available for so i know i think somebody that was eligible for sort of 700 pounds another person that's more around about a grand so okay. th- there are little opportunities here and there yeah as long as you just go out and just have a look maybe give them a call there are generally okay. things that you can get access to brilliant all right, thank you very much. I think I really appreciate taking your time to tell me a lot about Aston and hopefully you learned a little bit about UB as well. Yeah, um, happy to so, yeah, and I think this will be very good for all the people who are going to hopefully watch this and get a lot of benefit out of learning the difference between Aston and Birmingham and also the Islamic perspectives as well and how they can uh, hopefully increase their deen while trying to be uh, a medic, which can sometimes be a, a challenge in and of itself. And, uh, you know, one of the things, you know, uh, one of my last, like just saying messages is don't ever think of yourself as alone. Always get, go out, get for help. You know, if there is a community, an ISO community that there to help you, don't ever think like they'll judge you. Even if you're in the worst of positions, you know, it doesn't matter. There, there's always ways to come back um, and to get the help you need. Um, yeah. Do you have any final messages before we end it? No, yeah. So I, I would agree. Yeah, just... Uh... Yeah, it's like, you know, it's a, both of them are great universities, both of them are great communities of brothers and sisters there. So there's always somebody you can turn to. And um, yeah, if you have any further questions about Aston for me, I'll pass some personal details over to Intasar and then he can perhaps pass that on to anybody. He'll put it in the description. And uh, yeah, you can you know contact me anytime for any questions, any advice. All right. Thank you very much.